In this video, we're going to go over a few examples of computing optical path length, and we're going to start with a nice and simple one and then move on to more complex ones. So first of all, what is the definition of optical path length? Well, in math speak, it's the integral of the refractive index times the length. Now, if the refractive index is constant, then this is just equal to the refractive index times the length of that the light has traveled. In a less mathy way of talking about it, it's the number of wavelengths or the distance that the light has traveled. Light has traveled. And it's the distance of this. So it's the number of wavelengths multiplied by the wavelength in air. So this is physically what's going on. When light is in a low index medium and then it hits a higher index medium, it bunches up. And so it's as if the light is traveling further when the refractive index is higher. So let's start with an example. Let's say we have light that travels from point A to point B. And in order to compute the optical path length, you need to know the path that light takes. So you have to specify the path first. So I'm going to say that light travels in a straight path from A to B, which is one possibility. And let's say that A is at a location of x equals 0 and B is at a location of x equals D. And let's say that the refractive index is equal to 1 in this material. So light's just passing through air. In this case, because n is a constant, so it's just equal to 1 over this whole region, my optical path length is just equal to n, which is 1, times the length that light travels, which is d. And so the optical path length is just equal to d. And this makes sense. You know, light is starting at point A and it travels a distance d, so the optical path length is the same as the distance. That's nice and simple. Now let's do an example that's a little more complicated. Let's say that light starts at point A and then travels a distance d over 2 in a medium of refractive index of n equals 1, and then it switches. So it's now in a refractive index or a medium of refractive index of n equals 2, and then it travels another distance of d over 2 and hits point B. What is the optical path length? in this example. Well, we can't just use our equation n times l because the refractive index isn't constant everywhere, but it is constant on the left and it's constant on the right. So what we can do is we can figure out the optical path length for the first segment and then add it to the optical path length of the second segment. And the reason we can do that adding is because fundamentally we're doing an integral to find the optical path length. So we're summing over all of the segments in this case. So the optical path length, let's call this optical path length 1, OPL1, is our refractive index, which is equal to 1, multiplied by the distance that we travel. In this case, that's d over 2. And so our optical path length our first optical path length, the path length of our first segment is d over 2. Now what about the second one? So what is OPL2? So that's from this center to this point B. Well, this is equal to our refractive index, which here we said is equal to 2, multiplied by the length that we travel. So here that's d over 2. And so here the 2's cancel, and so the optical path length is equal to d. And now this is interesting because this distance is greater than the physical distance that the light traveled, but because the wavelength is shorter in this region than in this region, the light thinks that it's traveled twice as long. So our total optical path length from point A to point B is just our first one plus our second one, which is we said d over 2 plus d or 3 halves times d. 
So this is our final answer. Now the total, the physical distance that the light traveled is just a D. It's the same as in the last example, but the optical path length is larger than that because we're, we managed to fit more wavelengths into our into the same distance because of the higher refractive index. And this is also a reminder that optical path length is a length. It's measured in meters or units of distance. It's, it's, not a, it's not a unitless number. It's got a distance associated with it. Now let's do an even more complex example, something a little more fun. In this example, light's gonna take a bit of a more complicated path. So initially, let's say that light starts at point A, and then it travels down a distance D, then it goes into a medium of refractive index N equals two, bounces back, and then gets transmitted back through or gets refracted back through, and it comes back to the same point it was originally. And so I've called that point B. And I'm gonna assume that the distance between A and B is, is negligible. So they're essentially, they're supposed to be the same point. And we want to find the total optical path length. Well, here I see that there's, there's sort of four different steps going on. So I'm gonna break this into four different pieces. Now, the first piece, uh, let's call this optical path length one, is when light goes from point A to this interface here. And so it is in a refractive index of N equals one and it travels a distance D. So the optical path length, I'll call this optical path length one is just D because it's traveling in air or in a medium of N equals one and it's traveling a distance D. Now things get a little more interesting. Once it goes through this interface, it travels another distance D, but it travels in a medium of N equals two. So in this case, the optical path length is two times the distance D or 2D. Now the third sort of segment, if you like, is from this bottom interface to back to the interface. And here I'm assuming, so in, in this example, we're not going to deal with phase shifts. And if you don't know what that means at that point, at this point, that's totally fine. We're gonna go over an example involving phase shifts in the next video. For now, we're just gonna assume that we don't have to worry about them. So the third optical path length, when it goes from this bottom to this interface, is just, well, the refractive index is still two, and it doesn't matter what direction light is traveling. So refractive index is still two, and the distance is, well, goes from here to here, the distance is D. And so my distance here is again 2D. And finally, when it goes from this interface back to point A or to point B, if you like, the optical path length of that little leg of the trip is the refractive index, which is one, times the distance traveled, which is D. And so the total optical path length for that fourth segment is D. Now, if I add all of them up, the total optical path length is the optical path length one, plus optical path length two, plus optical path length three, plus optical path length four. And in general, it's the sum of all of the optical path lengths, the sum of all of the little segments that light has to take. And this is equal to D plus 2D plus 2D plus D, which is just equal to what, for 6D. And so this is our final answer for the optical path length from point A to point B. And it was a little complicated, so we had to sort of keep track of all the little segments that we, that light was, that l the light was taking. But it's, once you do that, it's fairly straightforward. You compute one, then you compute the next, then you compute the next, then you compute the next, and then you add them all up and you get your final answer. Now in the next video, we'll do an example with phase shifts. So we'll learn how to deal with reflection off of interfaces more accurately. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated and it is you who makes these videos possible. 
If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind the scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.